Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing the Maiden of the Zod Orbit and as well as giving you some of the information or some of the things that I'm currently doing and I wanted to see if you guys wanted to see, see it on camera. What I'm planning on doing is a complete transfer to an iNav build on this little beast because it is unbelievably efficient and I expect to get way more than an hour of flight time with one of these here. Now this is a lithium ion packs which I purchased from a company called 3DXR. Really awesome company, really great customer service and I definitely you should check these people out. Now let's get started here. Now I made it with just a basic setup with the inbuilt flight stabilizer. I did not have iNav installed but I completely removed everything and you'll see that right now here. Now for VTX I used the XUAV because it had a heatsink and the reason for that and it had a 5 volt regulator on board. The reason for that is because I was also I had it set up default with the run cam split 2S which sucks so much current. Go ahead and check my review on that and you'll see what I mean. So I designed this little board here for for the uh, run cam to just, you know, stay hidden and this was actually taped to the front but I had to remove it for the review. And uh, it was holding very well. However, what I noticed is this board gets so freaking toasty that it actually just basically starts warping the plastic. Uh, so that's something to take note of, but it's still holding pretty well here. So I'll probably have to print something in ABS for that. So that's the camera I use, and I also use, like I mentioned, this VTX, and I took it out for a flight, which you'll see towards the end of the video. But now let's take a closer look on the insides because I'm currently completely just making a huge makeover on this and I'm designing and 3D printing parts as we speak right now you might be hearing the 3D printer in the background and I will have everything available on Thingiverse it's kind of a shame that there isn't many things for this which um, it, this thing has so much potential I'm just quite amazed at the, the amount of things that it just doesn't have so let's take a look here now for a VTX mount what I decided to do is make a really really tiny small mount that's easy to print so basically it prints like this I don't need any support and doesn't have any overhangs so basically I just print it in and then I could bring it in exactly at the same dimension I'm gonna add a little bit of glue not so much just a tiny bit of glue on each side and on top and then just have that just be stuck there to hold all of my antennas that I'll be using and this is routed to an MMCX port so I can replace uh, VTX's which have MMCX if I'll be doing long-range testing on those VTX's so this is one thing that I've designed also for the run cam I think I showed you this uh, this is for the run cam it was a perfect fit but the reason why it looks like this now is because the run cam to split 2S board gets unbelievably toasty and thus warping that 3D plastic part. So I'm gonna have to figure out a different way, but even though it's still holding really well, what I do is I actually tape the camera to the front plate here and when I need to access it, I just lift it up like that and remove the SD card. So it just keeps everything ease of access, especially with the SD card in there. It does all my HD footage, it does all my VTX footage. So I really like that and it's it's been really reliable these past 10 flights, which I really enjoyed. And this is what you will see me flying in the review towards the end of the video. Now if you take a closer look here, let's remove the Maytag and let's take a closer look here. Now before what we had is we had the inbuilt stabilizer and we also had this piece of wood that was installed uh, in here and we should, I, I can't really remove this just yet but I don't know we can actually, which was installed like so. This was on the bottom, the stabilizer was below this and what I started to do was poke at it with a screwdriver just to release the glue and then slowly start taking it out. Um, and that's how I ended up taking this out. Obviously it broke here a little bit, but I'm not going to be needing this at all for the upcoming build. Now I've been taking into consideration uh, when building this is to keep the CG as best as possible and figure out the best battery placement. Now let's start with the antennas first and let's start with the R9. Now I decided to go with the R9 uh, just because I wanted long range and I've been testing it on my other models, which was absolutely phenomenal. So I took it out and I stuck it here. I have redesigned PCB mounts for the antennas because these come in like a PCB. They're just really flat and thin and I designed these little protectors here and I made two slits that were to go inside here. I haven't glued them in just yet but I will be gluing them once I, that's it, once I make sure this is exactly what I want. So that would go in like this and same thing goes for the other side and uh, they just, I made a little hole and just routed the MMCX as you can tell right there. Through that, servos don't get tangled or in the way, so that's good in that perspective. And I'm not planning on gluing them just yet, just making sure I don't get interference from the ESC with the R9 here, but we'll see that when time goes on. Now also what I'm planning on doing is setting up the R9 right in the back here. And on top of it, I'm planning on setting up a Matek GPS, which is currently uh, being shipped and will be here very soon. So that's what I'm planning on setting up on this end. Maybe a little, uh, just 3D print something above this possibly, or just sticking it on right there. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly if I'll do that or maybe put it out here somewhere, but I really want to keep everything inside of this. 
Also, for the flight controller, I am planning on using the Maytag F405 wing, even though the F411 wing would be a perfect candidate. But the reason why I chose the F405 wing is because of the amount of current that the Runcam Split 2S is taking. It's it's insane. So what I had to do is get something with proper proper voltage regulator on board for it, which I might be using the 9 volt regulator or the 12 volt regulator that's on board the power disc because it will take less current and then I can just uh, have better longevity of my components and not risk blacking out in the middle of the air or frying the board or something. So that's something why that's the reason why I chose the Matek F405 wing here now if you take a look here that I've removed the battery strap it was a really crappy battery strap and what I'm doing right now is actually I've designed a new bottom plate that would cover this and keep an, and allow me to create more than one battery strap so I can get the perfect CG for different batteries so for example if I'm going to be using a lithium-ion pack like this one or I'm going to be using a uh, you know a, a lipo like this one like a stubby one or if I'm going to use a thin lipo like this one so what I'm trying to do is keep it as universal as possible yet work for everyone and myself also this was the first prototype now the second prototype what will happen is I wanted to make these knobs that would go in here and glue to this but I don't want to make anything permanent or just cause me issues when I'm removing it so instead I've redesigned this one to be a little bit wider so it can hold in there much better and also two slits that would go in the previous battery holes, battery slots here, or the strap slots, and it'll hold in there very well. It should hold in there very well. It's currently printing right now, and if it does, that'll be up on Thingiverse. So we can just put that in. Well, I mean, first, obviously, put your battery strap on this, and then stick it in. We're good to go. And it also takes into consideration your SP port. Now you might say, okay, why don't you have the USB up there? Well, don't forget, there's a bar that's going to go across right there for the wings. And uh, you have to take that into consideration here. So now for VTX. Well, the antenna, uh, we're going to be using, I've designed this little cheap, very light mount just to go here. And for VTX, this is where I'm currently stuck. I mean, I did have the uh, AKK Ultimate FX2, uh, the, the one that's not stackable. And then I had the one that is stackable. But currently, the, the one that was not stackable, which was just like basically a half a stack, I currently lost it with my Zod Nano Talon, which you'll see me actually running a rescue mission with this guy towards the end of the video. Now what I'm planning on doing is creating some sort of adapter that will sit this in the front, as you can tell right there, and hopefully without gluing, I just designed a small little piece that will apply a little extra pressure and keep this into place. It'll also have plastic pieces to fill up the holes here so this won't be playing around, and that should keep it nice and snug, and I can just keep removing it and putting it back without keeping it static. And it just makes it a lot easier, and then I did have to find a right angle MMCX port, so it'd be a lot easier for me to route here, and this is, this is going to be a lot easier for me to replace VTXs so when I do VTX testing and things of that nature. So everything is going to be really confined here in this area. It's going to be perfect. Everything for the camera is right here, receiver back here, GPS back here, flight controller here, and just the battery. And um, this thing has plenty of room actually. It's more spacious than the S900. Now I've seen a couple reviewing a reviewer saying that there isn't much space, but to be honest, there's a ton load of space here. It's 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 insane. I can still fit some things here that I don't know what I need, but everything fits here. And I do have my HD recording capability, so I don't have to mount anything on top. And um, yeah, I just have everything ready made. So overall, this is the current status of the Zod Orbit. And if anyone's interested, this is the reason why I'm talking about this. If you're interested in seeing this being built on the channel, uh, let me know down in the comment section. Because if I don't get enough comments, I'm just going to build it. Because to, to have this in a video is a lot more difficult than building a quadcopter. At least, you know, what, this took actually two days of thinking, designing, and uh, going through different iterations before I finally made up my mind and finally started printing everything that I needed. So let me know down in the comment section. And now let's go ahead and jump to the maiden in the field. And um, we'll take it from there. Alrighty. Alright, so I almost wrecked it, but holy crap, I'm very happy how it handled itself. I almost ran into that pole. So I calibrated it correctly this time. Let's see what we can do. Now I'm not giving it any input, but it's still doing that right turn, as you can tell right there. I think it is because of the uh, the stuck flap or Elevon. So Let's see if we can find my Zelda Dino Talon. I know I lost it here somewhere. It just went in a spin of death over there somewhere. And again, I did find it with my 
Let's see. Let's drop the throne a little bit. Let's see. Somewhere here. Uh, I can't see it in my goggles. I don't know if you guys will see it on the HD footage. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Do you see it? I think, I don't know if you guys are going to see it. I'll make another pass. All right. Oh, let's just go a little bit further. Drop throttle a little bit. It's here somewhere. I just saw it. Let's see. Um, come on, goggles. Show me. Uh, I don't know where it went. I had to let go so I can kind of scoop the area a little. Let's see. It should be here. I mean, that's where I saw it last time. It was a little bit down from the edge of that field right there. Forgot to add Expo, so I'm like really sensitive on the skin right now. Oh, skin on the sticks right now. Hmm, we can't see it in my goggles. The noise is kind of... Oh, there it is. It's right under me. Oh, I just saw it. Wow, it's really that terrible to see in these goggles. I'm using Fat Shark HD3s, by the way. Maybe my HDOs might come in a couple days and we can actually uh, see if if if, it's still, if this is still there. We can see if... Uh, where are they? I just... Where did they go? Oh, here they are. They're under me again. All right, so it's like right there. Okay. Trying to figure out where it is exactly. So if I send someone over, or I send them a picture or something, or show them a video. I wish I could extract the GPS location from uh, the uh, Xiaomi Mi 4K drone, uh, but but I couldn't. I couldn't actually. Let's go cruising. It's really nice. I'm I'm really enjoying. It. I'm feeling more confident as uh, each flight is going through right now. Um, it came down the first flight. I don't know how long I was flying, but it came down at 3.9 volts, which is really, I was flying for quite some time. I mean, I could have probably hit 10 kilometers with that flight, possibly. I don't know. Maybe I'm over exaggerating a little bit. So, yeah, this is where the area of, this is uh, uh, where we have like, uh, what are they called? Wild animals that are kind of caged, like wild pigs and stuff, I guess. And some horses. I've seen some horses here also. So that's really nice. I'm just broadcasting at 200 milliwatts. The video is really great. I'm using the XUAV with the heatsink on there. And um, a new antenna from XUAV. I'll have it linked down below if you want to check those out. It's a really nice setup, actually. With the Wernicam 2S, I don't have to add extra more weight and worry about another expensive uh, camera getting lost here. And uh, I don't think you need it with the Wi-Fi version. I personally, if I were to get it again i wouldn't get it with the wi-fi i don't i don't even use the wi-fi but maybe for some people that's really important but if it's not for you, you just want some footage then um yeah that should be good let's do some low flying see how well that handles i can't see if there's a tree there or not we're not gonna bother you mr cow at least i think that's a cow that looks like a cow Oh my god. So I can't get it just to level out perfect. I have to give a little bit of left and a little I'm pitching down also. Thing is I don't have RSSI on my receiver because I had to disable telemetry here. Let's see if we can find my Zoldan Talon again. Where are you? I oh you know what all I want from there? Oh there it is. No, is that it? Yeah, I think that is it. I was on the right. All I want is the GPS and, and the and the Maytek flight controller back. I could care less about everything else. Maybe the motor too, if it survived. Because that's the same exact motor that's on this. It's an insane motor. It rained the other day, so I think the motor would have survived. Maytek probably. I don't know what the hell. We'll see. So right now, I'm going to give it all the way punch out. See what happens. Oh, I don't want to burn the ESC. Because the ESC, uh, I don't know. It's saying it could take 4S. But I just don't want to risk it. Right, we'll just give it 75% throttle. See how fast we can get it to go. I am really having to pitch down to keep it. This is full throttle. Yeah, but away from that area. 
I'm not about to lose it there again. Oh, this is really nice. So right now what I'm thinking is I'm teaching my friend how to fly so we can have battles in the air. And I think that's going to be so much fun. Maybe I create an infrared system with like two Raspberry Pis or Arduinos which could keep score when we shoot each other or something. Oh, what the hell's going on here? Oh, it's because I actually put too little of a throttle, so I went into landing mode, I guess. Let's go for another landing. It's getting too cold. I could barely feel my fingers and some other things also. Oh, I'm going to go for a landing. There we go. Throttle cut all the way down. Oh, shit. I think I'm going to hit myself here. Fuck, 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 fuck. Abort. Oh, shit. There we go. We're gonna go in for another landing. We'll just lose some more speed now. I'm still practicing my landings. And uh, if I feel just so slightly that I can't land, I, I won't because uh, I've wrecked a couple things like that and uh, I'm not about to wreck again. Okay, go down. There we go. No, no, no. Come on. Oh, that was nice. Yes! I love these things. They're so awesome. They know when they land and they turn off the motor too. Alright guys, so overall this plane was flying pretty stable, other than the fact that one of the wings has a stuck flap, sort of, ailevon. Um, it's kind of catching on something, and I think that's why it kept wanting to turn right, always when I just had no input to it. And um, I did contact Zod, and um, I don't know what the hell they're going to say. They said, oh my god, we've never seen this before. So, yeah, so I'll see, I'm going to see what I'm going to do with that. I'm trying to figure out what the hell's the issue. I'll probably get it another wing. Other than that... It flew really nice, even with that issue also. It actually flew really good. I didn't have to fight it. Um, that's why I'm go. I'm proceeding with the INAV build, and I'm probably going to purchase it, a different uh, wing for it. Just a uh, yeah, replacement wing, or I'm just going to contact Zod and make sure they send me a new one, because this is kind of uh, ridiculous a little bit. But other than that, it was, it was really good. I mean, I think maybe I'm the only person with that issue currently, but just keep that as a side note. And, well, that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think about the inav build if you guys want to see that so i can get started on it and um yeah i'll see you in the next one peace out guys